The Workers' Party faces more questions over how its leaders handled Raisa Khan's case after she lied to Parliament. Squid Game's creator is named the Straits Times Asian of the Year. Congratulations to Huang Dong Hyuk. And in our new feature on smart parenting, why more kids are having a go at skateboarding. You're watching The Big Story. I'm Olivia Quay. You can subscribe to The Straits Times channel so you never miss a single episode. Investigations continue by the Committee of Privileges into the complaint against former Workers' Party MP Raisa Khan. Lingering issues and more questions than answers after the, after the committee presented Parliament with a special report close to midnight last Friday. It contained evidence given by Ms Khan and two other WP MPs. So... What happens now? I'm now joined by The Straits Times' opinion editor, Grace Ho. Grace, can you give us an idea of what is to come from the Committee of Privileges hearings? Well, I think the um, most explosive revelations have so far come from the committee's report released on Friday night. Um, the contents, but also the timing of the release, which was after 11 p.m., I think is the sort of thing that gives reporters nightmares. Um, but actually, the process started earlier. So the committee met for the first time on the 29th of October, November. And um, among other things, it resolved at the time, um, you know, to call Ms. Raisa Khan and others as witnesses. And then they heard their evidence on the 2nd and 3rd of December. Um, and after hearing them, the committee resolved then to make the entire video recording available to the public. So moving forward from this point on, um, the committee will continue to investigate the complaint and hear further evidence as it sees fit. Um, all the report uh, said, and all that we know at this point was that it would be adjourned to December the 6th, which is today. And presumably if the Workers' Party leaders such as Mr. Prajan Singh and Sylvia Lim are called up, um, and Mr. Singh has made it clear at the party's press conference on December the 2nd that he is prepared to give evidence before the committee, then we may be able to get another special report this week. And going uh, by past precedent, if that's any indication of what is to come, then we might again get to watch the full testimonies on video recordings. Okay, well, Grace, you know, from what we heard from Ms. Khan, Lo Peying and Yudhistra Nathan at the Parliamentary Committee hearings, their accounts seem to differ from what Mr. Singh told the media last Thursday, right? Yeah, um, well, it's a long list of potential discrepancies, so uh, I'll just go into them briefly. Um, Mr. Singh told the media that the Workers' Party Central Executive Committee on November 2nd agreed to form the disciplinary panel. Um, and then they deliberated the panel's recommendations and voted overwhelmingly that Ms. Khan would be expected to resign or she would be expelled. But Ms. Khan and the other two WP members told the committee they were surprised when the party formed the panel because um, she said that when she met Mr. Singh and Ms. Lim on October 12th, and she asked if the party would take any disciplinary action, she supposedly was told that it would not, and she had not been told that she would be expelled if she did not resign. Um, and Ms. Lo, uh, who is the WP member, noted that this panel had actually known since August the 9th that Ms. Khan lied in Parliament but the Workers' Party statement on November 1st and 2nd did not mention that the party leaders knew or were involved in the matter. On the second one would be on why the Workers' Party leaders did not encourage uh, Ms. Khan to come clean sooner. Um, she told the committee that when she told the leaders about the lie, their reaction was that if she were not to be pressed, then the best thing to do would be to retain the narrative that she started. Um, but at the press conference, Mr. Singh said that the rep repetition of the lie in Parliament on October 4 was wholly inconsistent with revelations that she shared with party leadership. And then Ms. Khan said that when she met the leaders afterwards to discuss next steps, neither of them asked why she had lied again, mm. nor did they advise her to tell the truth. So, so you have this kind of to and fro that's kind of going uh, on um, even after Parliament adjourned on October 5th. Um, Mr. Singh said that the leader said she had to set the record straight almost immediately, but she said the decision to do so was reached only on August 12th when she met them and they came to the view that the matter would not stop there. 
So, um, so that's that's where we are right now, and um, you know, the truth will be out perhaps only quite some time down the road. Right. Well, Grace, you know, since the investigation by the Committee of Privileges is still in progress, the Workers' Party said it's prudent for the party to respond at an appropriate forum and juncture. Well, that's according to a statement released last night, the first time WP had addressed the public since the report came out on Friday night. Between Friday night and Sunday night, what do you make of WP's silence between that time? Okay, so our first recap what the statement essentially said, which is that it noted the release of the interim report by the committee without having taken the evidence of the Workers' Party's leaders against whom serious allegations were made. It also added that, you know, they understand the committee's work remains in progress. So it's prudent for a response to be given at the appropriate forum and juncture. So I think that's a key point there, which is that, you know, because the committee is ongoing, you know, the investigation is ongoing, they're really not in a position to divulge too many details. Um, but there's also the matter of the videos released on Friday night, which if you go through them, take about 10 hours to plow through. So granted, the party needed some time to go through the material and to see how it should respond. Um, but on the other hand, the media did try to reach out to the party, even on Friday night itself and all through the weekend. So the question that lingers is why it needs more than 44 hours to issue what is essentially a very brief holding statement. Um, in, in crisis communications, very often, you know, the advice would be to develop a swift response strategy, even if it's a limited one. And you do want to put out something there within 24 hours. It's like ripping off a Band-Aid. You know, the faster you do it, the less it hurts. Good point. So, Grace, what should be WP's next steps in the, in the week ahead? Um, well, Mr. Singh has made it clear uh, that he's prepared to give evidence before the committee, uh, if required. So I would be very surprised if he and possibly Ms. Lim and you know, Faisal Manak were also on the disciplinary panel mm -hmm. and who allegedly, uh, and I say allegedly because we really have no way of knowing who's telling the truth at this point, um, you know, who are involved in covering up the facts of the matter. Um, I would be very surprised if they weren't invited to testify before the committee perhaps this week. So there are only two things really at this juncture. Uh, they can choose to accept what Ms. Khan has said and face the consequences or they can refute the allegations fully, uh, both to the committee and, and ultimately to the public. So I'm just as interested as anyone out there right now as to how things will play out this week. Well, Grace Ho there, opinion editor for The Straits Times. In COVID-19 news, Singapore has reported one more possible case of the Omicron variant, with the health ministry yesterday saying one imported case has tested preliminarily positive. Whole genome sequencing is being conducted to confirm the variant. Well, the fully vaccinated Singapore PR is currently recovering in an isolation ward at the National Centre for Infectious Diseases. He had arrived from South Africa on December the 1st on the same flight as two previously reported Omicron cases. According to MOH, he had not interacted in the community and there's currently no evidence of any community transmission from this case. The Omicron case was one of 15 imported cases yesterday. There were 552 new infections, the third day in a row that new infections have fallen below 1,000 and the weekly infection growth rate was at 0 0.66. In the first five days of the land VTL opening via the causeway, more than 5,000 people have travelled across it. Although thousands from both countries took the designated bus services, it was still lower than the maximum quota allowed. If you recall, the quota, the daily quota, is 1,440 people in each direction. ICA says based on the numbers as at Friday afternoon, 4,343 people had left Singapore for Malaysia under the land VTL. That's about 60% of the total number allowed. Over the same period, some 2,700 people entered Singapore from Malaysia through the Air VTL. And in the latest update on the Sea VTL, Johor's Menteri Bursa says talks on the implementation could come as early as January at the Malaysia-Singapore Joint Ministerial Committee meeting. 
A warning today from the Monetary Authority of Singapore with interest rates expected to rise, households should stay vigilant and prudent. For one, they must carefully assess their ability to meet mortgage obligations and those with a heavy debt load should not take on more loans. MES noting in its Financial Stability Review report that due to a red-hot property market in the past year, households are holding more, much more debt now than before the pandemic hit. And that makes families more vulnerable to financial risks. And overseas, Myanmar's ousted leader Aung San Suu Kyi has received a four-year jail sentence for inciting dissent against the military and breaching COVID-19 rules. These first verdicts in a number of cases could see the 76-year-old imprisoned for decades. She faces charges from a range of offences that include corruption and violating the State Secrets Act, a telecoms law and COVID-19 regulations. Ms. Suu Kyi has been in detention since February the 1st when the military seized power in a coup. Hwang Dong-hyuk, the creator of the incredibly popular South Korean series Squid Game, has been named the Straits Times Asian of the Year for 2021. The global phenomenon on Netflix, it was watched for over 1.65 billion hours within its first four weeks. But did you know it took Hwang more than 10 years to get it made? Here's more from the man himself. Oh, the game is... 사실 뭐 재미가 있으라고 믿고 재미를 드리기 위해서 만들었기 때문에 어느 정도 정말 좀 자신을 가지고 이 작품은 사람들에게 사랑을 받을 것이라는 믿음을 가지고 시작하긴 했지만 어 정말 전 세계적으로 이렇게 신드롬이 일어날 정도로 어 사랑을 받을 것이라고까지는 예상하지는 못했습니다. 어 정말 좀 개인적이고 특수한 제 기억과 경험들 그리고 한국 사회의 이야기들을 가지고 얼마나 많은 사람들에게 보편적인 메시지를 드릴 수 있을까라고 고민을 하면서 만들었는데 제 고민이 인정을 받은 것 같아서 정말 기쁘고요. You can watch Huang's full remarks on our ST Asian of the Year show on YouTube. Now in its 10th year, the award has become an important part of the Asian calendar since 2012. It can be lots of fun and provides a great workout. What's not to like about skateboarding? In our new smart parenting feature on The Big Story, we look at how this sometimes risky sport has taken off among kids, their mums and dads alike. Chow Suan reports. Urban sports like skateboarding are gaining major traction in Singapore and around the world, with the sport making its Olympic debut at the Tokyo 2020. Here in Singapore, many young parents and their children are dropping, ollieing and skating straight into these skate parks to get their moves on. We meet three young families and their future skate superstars to understand why many more young parents are encouraging their children from as young as the age of three to take to the skies on their skateboards. My dad actually had an old warehouse. Then um, I saw these penny boards and I actually wanted to try them out. So he just like brought it home, we tried it and I actually just started skateboarding from then on. I, I like they can go high and you can do like flips on the board and do tricks. Gets me out of the house so I'm pretty happy. I like the wind. I feel like I'm flying. Because when I go very fast, the speed will, will make me feel wind. Super happy. Sometimes I will scream, yay! I have fun with my brothers. Because when I learn a trick, I feel happy. I like skateboarding the most. I get to meet friend, my friends at the skate park, overcome the fear, so, and practice it again and again. Sometimes I skate at, outside at the void deck or at the corridor. I practice my flat ground tricks. And of course, it's not just about the sport. Many parents take skateboarding as an opportunity to bond with their children and teach them life lessons in the process. 
Actually, all of them started when they were about four years old. Youngest one, because he saw his brothers doing it. So he probably started when he was three. three. Yeah. I feel proud because they keep on trying. I am happy because it teaches a lot of character skills for them to pick themselves up after they fall and overcome the fear. It also teach them not to be complacent even though they are very good yeah. at it. The most important thing is they can uh, be together. If they pursue it uh, professionally, it will be a bonus. Uh, otherwise, I hope they still enjoy the sport uh, when they are older. I've always had a pretty uh, positive view on, on skateboarding because uh, growing up I've had friends that skated and all and I, I was really glad when he picked it up because and that he had sustained interest in it as well because he's got a lot of energy and he kind of needs to expand that energy as well and it, it's just cool that we, we met really good people at the parks as well we met other families they made really good friends at the parks as well. The three siblings, they are all united by the same interests. It's all related to skateboarding. They will all watch skateboard YouTube videos together. One thing that's very obvious is for skateboarding, uh, even for my wife and I, is if you fall down, you just get up and do it again. There's something about, about it that just motivates him, or even for a beginner like me, to just be able to try it over and over again. To, to land his first kickflip was a big deal for him lah, because he had tried it for like two months or something. So to land that after after two or three months, definitely personal achievement. Um, if you don't have discipline, then you won't be able to land tricks. And like, if you're not hardworking, you also can't land tricks or do anything. It won't get better. In skateboarding, right? You have to try very very hard and maybe do it like maybe 50 times before you get it right not everybody times. yeah maybe 100 times but not everybody um, has that patience so i think it's a very good life lesson for any person to have la, that if you really want to do something yeah, you, you have to, to have patience you really have to have patience you have to practice harder than everybody else you must push yourself you must step out of your comfort zone and all, all those things uh. you know i gave her the choice so many times already. whenever she like feels a bit down and feels a bit frustrated whether in the music or in the skating i would tell her that say you can give up on so a lot of times she will suddenly get to realize it and say no i want to improve she will get up and try again in her studies for example i think Chinese, right? <laughs> Mandarin learning is like one of the biggest challenges in a child in an environment where we don't speak much Chinese in, in the family. One of her ambitions is she wants to be a singer songwriter. When we send her for like uh, school or enrichment lessons, right? You notice that she get the value. La. I'm learning this not just to please my father, my mom, and the school. I'm learning this because I know next time maybe this thing can can be of of value. Back to her, her passions. What I want her to learn from skateboarding is to not always have this sense of like instant gratification because that doesn't come with skateboarding. You can read more about kids getting fit and strong with skateboarding thanks to a big jump in interest in the sport. And for more tips, sign up for the ST Smart Parenting newsletter on how to help your child succeed in school and life. Visit StraitsTimes.com for more news and our YouTube channel for more videos. Subscribe by hitting the red button below. I'm Olivia Kui. See you tomorrow on The Big Story.